right, uh, right off the top of the show, uh, brought to you by Volvo Cars, Edmonton.com. They are Canada's number one Volvo dealership, a 13 time excellence award winners. Not only great vehicles, but even better service at Volvo Cars, Edmonton.com. And uh, in studio, joining us now, a uh, gentleman who was the 183rd pick in the NHL draft uh, less than eight years ago. And uh, now he is the uh, Connor McDavid of games played in the NHL. And maybe he didn't know that going into today, but he's got 97. Three away from the uh, the first uh, milestone, which is 100 games. And then uh, who knows? Maybe it'll be 1,000 uh, soon. Uh, Vincent DeHarnay joins us in studio. Vinny, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Hey, uh, I'm excellent. Uh, good to have you in studio. And uh, we're going to get to why a uh, very special reason uh, why you're in studio. We'll get to that a little bit. Usually on Wednesdays, we have a segment called uh, Who is it Wednesday? So we're kind of going to uh, hijack that a little bit today. Um, you've had a pretty unique um, career path, I think, to, to the NHL, unlike a lot of different players. And I kind of want to, we'll get in, I want to go back to that, but I want to find out how, how a kid who was, you know, uh, from, uh, from Laval ended up playing in Chilliwack in the, in junior, uh, in junior A for a year. How did that, how did you go across the country? How'd that happen? Um, uh, first of all, I was, uh, I was not drafted in, uh, in the queue. So that was a big thing. I wanted to obviously to, to get drafted when you grew up in Quebec, uh, getting drafted in the queue, going to play there. It's kind of a dream. And, uh, my first year, 15 years old, I, I didn't get drafted. And uh, out of my team that I was playing for, five guys were at the draft, and I was the only one, the only one who was not drafted. Oof, so I was okay. crying. It was the end of the world. My career is over. This and that. And uh, the the team I was playing for it was a, a kind of a prep school. So we would travel to the U.S. It was called uh, Ulysses Prep School. Okay. And uh, and one one of the guys there came to see me. He was hey. He goes, we'll find you a plan B. You'll go to the U.S. You'll go prep school. You will play college. So I went to go play prep school at Nor uh, Northwood Prep. And uh, from there, kind of, I fell in love with the, the college aspect of it. I was like, I want to go play college. It's okay. it's the route for me. And uh, yeah, from uh, from prep school, I, I got some interest from the BCHL. And I had a few teams. And uh, my agent knew the coach there. It was Jason Tatarnik. Okay. And uh, they kind of talked, and he was like, "Hey, like, bring him in. He will will work on his boots. We'll work on his <laughs> on his puck skills." And uh, and yeah, next thing you know, I played there for a year. I was supposed to play there for two, and only played there for a year. Providence offered me to come in right away, and I accepted it. And I think in April or yeah, late April, and I I went my first uh, first day of summer school. I think July first, I showed up there. So it was uh, in Providence, in for Providence summer yeah, for summer school. So I was supposed, I, I thought I was going to go play second year in the BCHL till April twentieth or so, and uh, July first, I was I was the uh, first day of summer school at, at uh, Providence College. Oh man, that's great! And so when you went when you were in Chilliwack, uh, that was your uh, you know you were eighteen. Yeah, uh, already. So yep. a little bit. Of, now, were you always like? Were you six five, six six when you were eighteen? Yeah. yeah, I was. Uh, I think by then I was six five. I was probably six five. Probably 190, 200. Okay. Yeah, I was pretty. I mean, skinny now. I was. I was really skinny back then. <laughs> I was, like at fifteen. Uh, I remember fifteen. The first I showed up at camp, and I was like, "Look at me!" It was like, "This guy's so tall." I was like six one, one forty five. I mean, I was a string bean. It was yeah, yeah. it was crazy. Um, but and that's why I think that college was the right path for me because it gave me four years to work out, uh, work on my uh on my body my 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 uh my maturity and um it's hard to be a big man and, yes. and to skate every day and to uh to be fluent skating and you know my skating has gone so much better and even now sometimes i'll i'll do some movements and it doesn't look uh very fluid uh so you can only imagine five ten years ago how <laughs> bad it was <laughs> vincent deharnay joins us so you go from the chilliwack chiefs uh now you're in providence college and uh you know that, like that's Probably a little bit of a culture shock too uh, for you, but you go there. You're in summer school. You're into Providence. The uh, kind of tell me like from year one in Providence because uh, you weren't in the lineup every game, or did you get injured your first year? No, I was I was scratch. You're a scratch. Okay, <laughs> yeah. and that and that's kind of normal. But then you know you get up now. Your your last few years, you're playing a ton. Take me through like your progression because I think it was your 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 finished your first year of Providence, 
And that's when you got drafted, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. I played uh, 18 games out of 42, I believe, or 41. Yeah. So I think the first half of the season, I probably played six games. Yeah. And, um, you know, we'd play one game and I would be scratched five games. I would play one game. I'd be, I'd be scratched for another two, two or three weekends. And, uh, in college, you know, we don't play yeah. that, that much. So like forever. you just, you just practice two hours a day. And especially when you're not playing, you practice even more and you're still on the ice and more. So I would be on the ice, like two and a half hours a day, uh, just practicing and trying to get better. And, and, uh, I remember the, the assistant coach, the, the D coach there was, uh, Scott Borick. And I'm so thankful for him because he spent so much time with me and he gave me so much confidence of, of believing in myself. And it's hard. You're a kid. You just show yeah. up. I was the, there was in our class, um, there was uh, seven of us and all, and the other six guys were, were from the USHL. They all knew each other. I'm a Frenchie. I show up there. I'm a tall, you know, tall, lanky guy. I was yeah. like, who's that guy? Like his English is awful. Like his, his <laughs> accent is not great. Um, and yeah, and for me, I just kind of um, all that anxiety, all that stuff. I just, I just stay on the ice, and for me, it was my safe place. And my, that's kind of, I've always been, I've, I've always had a good work ethic. But I think that's where I kind of developed it even more. Than I realized that if I want, if I want something, if I want to prove to people that I can play, if I want to prove my coaches, my 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 teammates, I just got to work for it. And I, and the more I work for it, the more it's going to come. And and also, I finished the season. I was playing every game. I was scratched for two months. I didn't play for two months. And then after that, the first game back, I played the rest of the season. Of the I played uh, NCAA tournament. I scored my first goal at the TD Garden at the in the hockey uh, semifinals. Come on! Uh, my brother was there in the stands, like right, like aligned with me. Where I like it was, uh, it was crazy. So uh, it was, uh, it was a really cool. Uh, learning experience it was hard at first because yeah. i'm like hey i left everything behind to come to college my parents are paying a lot of money that they don't necessarily have that they're just putting on the car they're just putting on the house because they want to me you know they just want to give give that dream to me um and i put my i doubted myself quite a bit and uh, i remember calling my agent and i remember that moment precisely like we were playing ncl and we're during the I think it was between the second and third and I'm in the stands. I called her. I was like, do you think I should like transfer? Do you think I should like, I'm not playing here. I want to play. He's like, Vin, just keep working. Like you're like, you're going to get there. You're the type of kid that will, you will get there. And next thing you know, I assistant captain, captain afterwards. And it was just so many great things that, that happened to me. And it was the best four years of my life for sure. Vincent Deharnay joins us. And I, I think the great lesson there is it's so easy like the easy thing to do would be to quit yep. because anybody can quit, yep. right? But you're like, no, no, no. And and you need some people to say, no, you don't quit. What about, you know, you mentioned your parents yep. and not everybody gets a full ride scholarship just because nope. you go NCAA. I think that's a real misnomer sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Everybody just thinks, oh, he's NCAA. He's getting a full boat. So what well, did you ever have advice like for me? Did your mom and dad ever give you one of those? No, no, no. There's no quitting here. Like how, how was the support system from your parents? Um. So my mom was always... She's always like, whatever you decide to do, I'll I'll be there for you. I'll support you. Uh, and my dad was a, a little bit tougher of like, no, you stay there. You keep you keep working hard. You keep going. And like, it's gonna ha just trust yourself, believe in yourself. And it was I've always had that kind of struggle of finding everyone else better th than me. And always my oh, wow, that guy's really good. Oh, that guy's really good. And kind of, oh, he's way better than me. But. Um, but then, yeah, my 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 dad, my brother, they always believed in me. They, and even in, in when I was in the East Coast, my dad kept telling me, he was like, like you're going to make it. I know it. You just got to keep. And I'm like, dad, I'm in the East Coast. Relax. Like, I'm so far away. And you just, and when you have that kind of belief um, every day that you talk to him and that he, he mentions it. And he was not, he was not saying you're the best player in the no, world. Like, no. you're, not, you're, you're the next Conor McDavid. He was not uh, over pumping, uh, pumping me up. But he just believed in me, and when you have that support, that everyday support, at some point you start, you know, you just believe in yourself. And uh, it was the same thing for my for my brother. So when it happened, when I finally made it, to to share that with them yeah. and to in you know to, in Anaheim and to to, I remember I told my my brother and my dad afterwards. Um, I gave them a handshake, I gave them a hug, and I told them, I was like, I was like, bro, we made it. I mean, yeah. it was not I made it. Yeah, it was we made it. Because they they're living their 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 
dream true me. And they supported me in, through thick, I don't know, East Coast and, 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 and concussion. And, and it was so many things that happened that, that were uh, not necessarily typical for an NHL player. Yeah. And, and I remember my dad kept saying, he goes, once you get there, you're, you, you, you're not going to leave. You're going to be, you're going to stay there because you're going to have to, you're going to go through so many things in your career that once you make it, you're going to have all the experience you need and you're going to be able to stick around and stay there. And next thing, and I, and I, not that I didn't believe him, but I was like that I'll focus on just getting there and we'll see afterwards. And now like you said, I'm 97 games in and you know, things are going pretty well. I, I'm, keep getting better every day i keep trying to work on my game and it's uh it's crazy to think about that four or five years ago i was you know three leagues away and you know i was so far away and now i'm 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 in so. now you mentioned uh, vincent de Hernay jones you mentioned how uh, when you didn't get drafted in the queue you know your crown oh, geez career is over so i'm guessing then in 2016 you just turned 20 in may because your birthday's in may you turned 20 the drafts uh in, you know in june a month later I'm guessing you weren't at the draft in uh, 2016. Were you even thinking like, what? who gave you the call that, hey, the Edmonton owner is drafting the seventh round and did you sense someone was pranking you? Uh, no, I was actually following the draft. I was at my, uh, my brother lives like three hours away from uh, Montreal. He lives uh, on a lake. So we were on his boat. So uh, you thought, so you were thinking maybe I'll get drafted? Well, I, I had a, you know, I was like, maybe, maybe there's some chances. And my, my agent talked to me. He said, there's a bunch of teams that, oh, okay. that, that called me and, and it's going to be, a you know, you might be a, a late, late rounder. And, um, so around the fifth or sixth round, I started kind of looking at my phone, kind of refreshing it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I was with, uh, two of my, my good buddies were with me. My brother was there and they were all like, having casual you know drinking beers and like they're like have a beer i was like no 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 like not yet as i was like if i get a call i want you know i want to be there i want to be 100 percent down there yeah. like <laughs> and uh and at some point uh i kind of my, my brother talked to me he's like you're gonna put the phone away right now okay i'm tired of seeing you looking at your phone like just enjoy the day it's a beautiful sunny day if it happens it happens it doesn't you'll find a way and uh like not too long after um i just see like my agent calling me so I, like right away i, I kind of got excited so i answered and he's like congrats you just got drafted to edmonton so i kind of froze and then right after that i saw my phone house like my so i answered my mom you got drafted <laughs> and she's crying and she's like so so happy for me yeah. and uh and, and still there my, my brother my my buddies they don't know it they're still you know having fun and, and i just put my head down and i start crying my brother's like I told you it doesn't matter because <laughs> it doesn't matter if you not if you don't get drafted because he thought that the draft yeah. was over and yeah. I was like I was like I got drafted I'm in debt. and he just and then the rest of the day was just oh, such just a, a party such a crazy yeah. you know fun day that to enjoy with my fam with my 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 buddies my brother um, and I remember uh, uh, the first person from Edmonton who called me was uh, Rick Carrier okay he was the uh, director of uh, development back then and I remember he called me and I, I told him I was like I'll, I'll show you guys that I, I was worth drafting and you know seventh rounder like, yeah yeah for sure yeah, <laughs> you know like oh, everyone says that blah blah yeah. blah and I I, I, rem I I kept remembering that sentence I told him and that kind of drove me forward of like I'm a man of my word I'll show him I'll okay. show him that I was right and and to like when I played my first game uh the, the the dinner before I, I told that to my my parents I was like hey remember when I talked to Rick and I told him I was like well I'm really happy that I, I stuck with him and and, and here and I, I made it and you know you talked about all the adversity because it was you know not getting drafted the queue and then going to Providence healthy scratch for two straight months and then you know you just kept building and building then you come to the to pro camps and you got injured <laughs> two years in a row like the second year especially uh la like last year, yep. you were coming to camp, and I think a lot of people were like, "Hey, like this guy's taking big strides." Yep. You know, the coach I had in the American League is now the head coach. He knows me. Dave yep. Manson knows me. Yep. Um, was that as as all the trials that you've had? Was that the toughest one at that time that you got injured in that training camp and didn't get to go through camp? Um, when it happened, when I because at first I I broke 
uh, bone in my hand and and at first they said it's gonna be four four to six weeks just it's gonna heal you're gonna be fine so it was gonna probably heal up right around training camp yeah. right, right around the first couple of days so i was like i'll be fine you know i'll get a week or two and i'll play and um and then after a month they're like oh the bone is not healing up you're gonna have to get surgery and then it's gonna be an extra 46 and that one was really tough to to hear i was very frustrated um but I changed my mindset pretty quickly because I'm like, I'm, I'm here. You know, I have the, that contract. I have the contract for two years uh, and I know what I can do. And I kept a pretty positive mindset through all that. Uh, my parents came to, to, to spend a week with me as okay. well to kind of help me out through, through my surgery. And uh, so I went down to Bakersfield, played five games yep. and got infected again. I had to get another surgery. Yes, I remember that. And it's just like, you know, at some point it's like, what's going on here? Like, am I am I not doing things right? And, yeah. But I kept going back to it's all out of, like out of, out of my power. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, so I kept just thinking positive about it. And I was like, I'll just take it as, you know, some time off, time for my body to, to heal up. To, so I was getting lots of treatments, my back, my hips, you know, to try to feel as good as possible coming back. And... I played, came back, played eight games, and I got called up afterwards. And I didn't think it was going to happen that fast. But once I got called up, I was like, all right, let's go. Let, you know, let's do it. I've waited long enough. And yeah. I was so, and by not playing that much, I had so much energy. I felt so good that when I got called up, I, I was so jacked up for a couple of months where guys have been playing for half a season already, right? And uh, you feel it. You're, you're not as, as uh, energetic and all that. But I was like that second half of the season, like the whole the, – the, I was every game. I was like, I'm, I'm in the National Hockey League. Like, let's go. Like, I started with two hand surgeries, and now I'm here. Like, let's just enjoy every every game, every practice, and let's, let, let's just get better. Uh, Vincent DeHarnay joins us. Uh, great start to, to the show talking about this. But uh, when we return um, – some order fans have uh, have started to notice that uh, the hockey hair is a uh, is coming out the back of the helmet, and uh, we'll find out why. There's a very specific reason. We'll find out next on the Jason Greger Show in Sports 1440, presented by PlayAlberta.ca. And uh, of course, uh, in his uh, second season uh, with the Edmonton Orders, uh, was drafted in uh, in 2016. Went to Providence for three more years, then uh, didn't sign an entry level deal. Signed an American only deal. Uh, for a few years and then got his uh, first NHL contract and actually is a, a pending UFA. So we do have lots of texts wondering, hey, is Vinny going to announce his contract extension today on the show? Uh, <laughs> I'm sure he'd like to, but uh, uh, I, I don't, I don't, well, we'd like that too, but I don't, uh, I don't know if that's the case. Have, be, we'll get to why you're growing your hair out in a second, but do you worry about that stuff at all? Like, ha, like, or is, is it hard not to, or do you just think about it once and say, hey, my agent's uh, dealing with it when the exactly. Uh, obviously, when people, people will, will ask me it's it's something that you think about because obviously i want to stay here i want to i want to sign with with edmonton i i, I found my home i and i i love it here Lo love the boys love the facilities the the staff every everything the fans everyone is great to me i i really like it. i'm comfortable and it's great um but you know the business side of it i have an agent for it and that's why i gave him four percent of my contract you know <laughs> it's it's uh um, I love him. I trust him. Has been with with me for for I've been with with him for ten years, um, and that's why kind of I told him I was like, hey, I want to focus on hockey. If you have to, you know, to to talk to me, to call me about it, you know, call me on days off. You know, I don't want to I don't want it to be a, a distraction. Um, so hopefully, you know, at some point we can uh, we can find uh, an an agreement. But uh, till then, I just focus on uh, on tomorrow's game. All right. Now, um, the, the hair is growing out, uh, you know, as somebody who's follically challenged, um, you know, I always kind of <laughs> notice, uh, uh, you know, certain hairstyles and stuff. I have a lot of fun with it. And, uh, you were always down to the wood guy, uh, last year, but I noticed when you came to camp this year, I'm like, Hey Vinny, what's up? Uh, what's up with the locks there? And then you, you told me why. And when we made a deal, I said, Hey, later in the year, We'll have you come in studio and we'll yep. talk about it. So uh, tell me why you're growing out your hair. Yeah. So I'm doing a challenge. It's called the Lurkin Shaved Head Challenge. So uh, it's a charity back home, back in, in Quebec. And uh, that's a challenge that they, they basically encourage people to to do, uh, to shave, to raise money. And then you shave your head uh, because obviously you, you try not to support uh, people that, that get, that get uh, 
diagnosed with uh, with cancer, and uh, that charity will help uh, uh, kids, children uh, that get that get uh, diagnosed with, with with cancer, and they'll help uh, their families as well. And you've done this a few times, have you not? Yeah, so, yeah, so it's going to be the the third time I'm doing it. So uh, uh, combine the first uh, the first uh, two times I did it, I raised uh, just a little bit over ten grand. Okay. Yeah. And um, you look at it now. Now your brother Alex is doing it with you. Yeah, this time? my my brother decided this year that he's gonna he's gonna do it with me, which I'm. He was kind of making fun of me when I shaved it uh, two years ago. <laughs> like he didn't like it, <laughs> and he decided to do it. So I, oh. it's, gonna be, it's gonna be interesting to see him uh, with the, with the bald head. I'm I'm pretty excited, but it's for it's for a great cause, and um, you know, you, I I think of kids that. You know, I, I had a childhood where I didn't have to worry about being sick or worry about losing my hair. Or, um, I go into hospital every you know couple times a week or, or even stay at the hospital for months uh, and not having you know really a normal childhood. So um, for me to shave my head and to spend some time to uh, try to raise some money and that's that's not much for me to 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 do and to use kind of my my platforms. Um, to try to raise money for kids that didn't have the same luck that that I had, and um, thinking about those families too, those, those yeah. parents that um, just seeing your your kids going through so much pain, and um, and and the the charity will 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 the the foundation will help kids from zero to seventeen years old. Not I'm not saying it's better at seventeen, but you know, think about a baby one, two, two years old who doesn't even know what what life is. Yeah. And he's got to go through chemo treatments and he's got like, it's just, I can only imagine uh, the pain uh, as a parent that, that you feel. Yeah. So if I can help and, you know, anyway, by raising money, raising awareness uh, for it, I mean, I think it's a, uh, it's a great cause. And uh, you're, you're, you're trying to up your game. You've taken it pretty serious this year. You, so people, they can go uh, follow Vinny on Instagram. He's got the links up on his Instagram yep. page on, on where you can donate. And uh, you've uh, you've reached out to uh, to a few of the big dogs in your in yeah. your inner circle. Yeah. So so people that donate uh, fifty dollars or more get yeah. to go in a raffle. Yeah. There's a signed McDavid jersey, yeah. a signed Gretzky jersey, yeah. and a signed Paul Coffee jersey. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you you might as well throw in a signed Vinny jersey. It's your own thing. I might I might do it, but I, I, I want to. I wanted to have the the big boys in. I think uh, <laughs> I think when when you think of the Oilers, I mean those three guys. I mean, there's there were some great Oilers players, but I think that those three guys are probably the top three players that ever played for, uh, for for the Oilers. So, um, and it's a way too that I wanted to get the 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 fans involved. You know, I think uh, the fans have been they have been great to me, and um, I kind of you know if they 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 donate money, I want them to be able to get something back. Um, and you know, I talked to Connor, I talked to Cough, and right away it was no hesitation. It was yes, of course. Like anything you need, I'll, like I'm like we're we're here for it. So I asked Cough if maybe he could reach out to his good buddy Gretz, and and right away again it was a yes. No, like don't even worry about it. He's in. Um, so it's uh, it's really I'm really thankful to see like th those guys because they really don't have to you know they 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 have so many people reaching out to them for those uh, for different uh, fundraisers and and different uh, uh, foundations so uh, for them to to share that with me and to to give me access to those jerseys I mean I think it's pretty special and hopefully uh, the fans are, are as excited as as I am. Now, do you do now? If you donate to your own cause, do you get to win one of the jerseys? <laughs> no, I mean I think uh, s some of the guys uh, donated already. So some of my teammates, yeah, um, and they're not. They're and, get to and win. they're not. Yeah. I I didn't even tell them about uh, the little challenge. I don't think I'll. Uh, I think they have they have their their own jerseys yeah, that they yeah. want. So uh, again, uh, people go to your Instagram. You'll have a website and everything up yeah. as, as we get closer. We're having yeah. on again in the summertime, just kind of you know remind people as yeah. it gets closer yeah. forward. I think it's fantastic to help out uh, you know young kids with cancer, and I really like what you said about their families because yeah. it's not just supporting the child; it's you know the parents who maybe their siblings, yeah. just the whole situation around it. It's uh, there's you know we have the story right here in Edmonton and you know, lacrosse cancer. And there's lots of people in our city who know just how important yeah. those facilities are to and, help um, kids. The, the, the cool thing I think is when you donate, you can kind of decide where your, your money is going. Oh. So you can click uh, there. I think there's like four or five different uh, uh, pointers that, that you can decide. So it's like there's a cl clinical research for, 
better treatments, trying to find a cure. Obviously, uh, it's still, cancer is such a, a big issue and mm-hmm. such a, a great a big uh, uh, illness. Um, so uh, you can donate towards research. Uh, you can donate towards emotional and physical assistance, which I think we can all understand that it's uh it's it's very challenging for both uh the kids and it's and from talking to to families it's almost harder on the on the parents um and and Lurka is great at, at providing that that support and they'll they'll organize different events to have uh, families come together different families and and share um their their experiences uh so that they don't feel alone Because, yeah. you know, some families, maybe some parents, they don't have anyone around them going through the exact same thing of of having a, a, a sick a sick kid a, a, at home or, or at the hospital. Uh, so that's a great thing, too. Uh, the, uh, you can pick for just uh, financial assistance. No one, no one, I think, in life will say, okay, let's plan a, a, a little fun just in case our, our children yeah. get, uh, you know, they, they, they get diagnosed with, with uh, cancer. So they have different grants. They have a bone uh, marrow transplant grant because it's very expensive. They have a re- recurrence grant if you, you know, the, the cancer comes back. And they'll even have a monthly care um, allowance because parents, you know, if you spend every day at the hospital, you're not working. Yes. You're not, and oh, and sometimes huge. they have, you know, they'll have other kids. You you got to provide for your family, uh. So Lurkat will help that. They will help those families with a certain amount monthly, um. So that's why the the, the money is, um, it, it's not just about the money. It's just about giving those families a better, you know, a little bit of a better lifestyle, uh. Even though they're going through so so many horrible things, uh. That they, they that was unplanned and um. And another big thing too is that they uh, they support families going through grieving too. Because yes. um, as much as it, as much as you know, we're talking about you know the positive and and you know giving the financial support and all that. Well, some kids don't you know they don't make it, and uh, and I just um, just thinking about it, I just it, it just hurts to think that you know you you put your your kid into this world for him to die that three, four, five, six years old, 10 years old from a, a disease that you had no control over. Um, so the Lurkan will provide uh, support to, to those parents to try to help them to go through that. And um, yeah, it's uh, I'm, I'm really, uh, really grateful for that, for that foundation in, in Quebec. They've been around for 45 years um, and, and they've been around because people have been so generous And uh, I think it's a cause that everyone can get behind. And um, that's why I hope that, you know, and even though it's in Quebec, and I hope that uh, Edmonton can get behind me and uh, they can, you know, help me uh, reach my uh, my goal and even go over it. Because uh, it's not, you know, it's not going to me. It's not going to, to the Oilers. It's going to all those families, all those kids that um, they, they, they need people to help them get a somewhat of a better life. Vincent DeHarnay joins us. And of course, uh, go to his Instagram, which is uh, DeHarnay underscore two. Uh, he hasn't updated it since he went to the NHL. That was his uh, his provenance number. <laughs> All right. So, hey, that's good, though. Keeping it real. Yeah. Now, listening to you talk, uh, Vinny, I can tell, like, obviously, it's something very passionate. It's very meaningful to you. It means a lot to uh, Lacan, the, the, the charity. But also, now that, like, you're an NHL player, do you do you feel the importance to to make sure that you can use your profile you know, to benefit causes like this yeah. more. Is that something where you feel like, you know what, maybe I need to do even more in, in the community? Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, that's, you know, it's, I have, uh, most people know I have a, um, a, a journal that I write in every day and I have, uh, affirmations that I'll, that I'll write, uh, in it every day. And one of it is, uh, I want to give back to the community, but not just money. It's time. Yeah. Um, cause it's easy to, to, to give money. It's easy to just, Oh, here's a grant, you know, here's a thousand dollars. Just leave me alone. Right. Um, but when you take your time, you take some of your time and you know, we're, we're pretty busy, you know, we're traveling a lot. We're, um, but taking the time to do it, I think that's way more valuable than just, uh, than just saying, Hey, take, take money and just leave me alone. Um, so I, uh, every day I try to, to, you know, to find ways to kind of get involved sometimes, you know, it's a little bit harder, but, um, I think this, this cause is great and that's why I try to use all the, that's why I came to you and that's why I'm here right now because I'm trying to use the platforms and, you know, radio and, um, to, to, 
to actually reach out more people. Um, and I have a few other things that I'm working with uh, the team uh, back in. I think there's going to be a game at some point uh, before the, the end of the season that uh, uh, Skins and I are going to uh, get a few families uh, from uh, the foundation, kids with, with cancer. Yeah, We're going to have them over at uh, one of our games. We're going to get a box for them. And we're going to go meet them afterwards. Um, it's just small things. And we're not doing it because we want people to tell us, oh, it's great. You know, you're doing, you know, thank you. And at the end of the day, I don't care, you know, if I'm not doing it for to feel good about myself. So I'm doing it, you know, because, um, you know, I, I actually met some people uh, from the foundation, kids with with cancer i met four or five kids and uh, th their parents at um one, one of the games and um to see like the pain that they're going through yeah and just how happy they were to see us to come to want to one of the games to take pictures with us to joke around with us they just forget that they're going through chemo treatments and yeah. they forget some of them were in you know terminal phase of cancer Could you imagine? Like, I can only imagine, you know, the parents knowing that their kids won't make it, but for one night, they don't have to think about it and they can just enjoy hockey and they can mm -hmm. just enjoy having fun and seeing their kids smile and seeing their kids not being in pain. Um, so that's the way I see it. And I try to, like you said, use, use kind of, uh, where, where I'm at, use the platform uh to try to touch as many people as i can and again not just doing it with money but doing with with time i think you reach a lot oh. more and it's way more valuable than just than just money well we've had a lot of texts coming in at 833-401-1440 from uh people showing pictures uh to us of the you at the uh, the signing days uh we, we got one here right uh because right after you got called up from anaheim It was pretty quickly after yeah, they like had this. Yeah, two, three weeks after. Yeah, the Friday yeah. day, right? So yeah. you're here. And oh, yeah, I was bald. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and no, we have, uh, we have a few guys who have texted in and they've got some pictures from you there and just saying how great Vinny was uh, with their kids. And, you know, because I'm sure, like, I remember my son, uh, you know, when, uh, you know, I had him out to practice once and, you know, he takes a picture and he always looks at it and laughs because, you know, when you're 10, and then there's Vincent DeArnay and he's on his skates and he's like 6'9", right? Like, it's... Uh, you know, like it's a big deal. Like yeah. it's just, it's funny for kids because they're like NHL guys. Obviously, I'm sure when you were a kid, you're in Montreal. I don't know if you're a Canadians fan. I'm guessing maybe Canadians. Yeah, fan. I was kind of a bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, probably had favorite players, right? And you're just yeah. like, oh my god, like to see them, it's a big deal. Yeah, and I don't think players should ever forget that. It's, it, I love how you said time is what matters. Like. You, you know, not even an auto. I'm not a big fan of autographs, but that's me. I'm like, you get a picture with someone, or you take a minute to just talk to them. Hey, yeah. little Johnny, what's your name? Yeah. That's something that matters way more. Yep. Yeah. No, I agree, and like that, that's why when people sometimes they'll they'll send me letters and you know to tell me like, uh, no, I, I, you know, I'm your I'm your fan. I I love what what you're doing and in, in, in your story. Um, it's I try to take the time to to reply back because. You know, and I, I get I get Instagram messages of like, oh my God, you actually replied to my son. He was going to the mailbox for two months to he was waiting for your for your reply. And at some point he wasn't sure and he actually got it. He hasn't he hasn't been he hasn't stopped talking about it for, for, for last week. And I'm just and to me, I'm I'm still in my head, I'm still a nobody. You, you know what I mean? I'm still a guy who's just a kid from Laval, who's from a simple family. You know, that thing grew up with, you know, it was very simple. It was, that's, I'm okay with that. Oh, yeah. But right now I have this platform. I have, you know, the, these fans that that love me, that show me love. So I just try to to give it back and to show them that, hey, I'm human too. And I'm just trying to, to give back to as many people um, as I can. Well, I, I think a lot of hockey fans, like, you know, everybody aspires to be Connor McDavid. And I love how people say, well, Nobody can be Connor McDavid. So lots of the other guys, you're like, you know, you could be Vincent DeHarnay if you wanted to now, listening to your story in the yep, first segment. 100%. Like, you got to grind all the time. Yep. And, and you know what? Uh, it's not going to be just this nice escalator up to the yeah, NHL, no. right? <laughs> but, you, but, but by doing that, you're, first of all, you you got to enjoy enjoy the grind. Yes. You know, and I, I, I tell myself that every day. Enjoy it. Because when things are, you know, things happen, great things happen, you enjoy it so much more. Than just oh yeah you know I'm a first rounder and like great you know Connor great he's such a great player such a great person I love Connor but 
he knew he was going to, you know, he knew right from junior he was going to play in, in the NHL. And I'm sure he enjoyed it. But I think that maybe for me, it was a little bit more meaningful because I've been through so much and I grinded a lot to yeah. get here, to, to make it here. Um, and, you know, it's hard. Like some days were hard. Some days you, you're doubting yourself, but that's why you got to surround yourself with a, a, a great support group. And uh, you just got to believe in yourself. That's that's the easy the 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 best the best thing I can say and have fun with it. Have fun because life life goes by so quickly. You just gotta have fun. How much fun do you have? And um, because you know it's funny because my kids now they're old enough that they watch the team I coach and you know they watch the games a little bit closer and they see different things and you know one one, one of our young defensemen uh, blocked a shot not on purpose. <laughs> But he blocked a shot. He came to the bench and he hit him in the side of the skate. He's I was almost in tears because they're not used to it. And I think my son overheard because I, you know, we just talk about different positions. I'm like, man, blocking shots is hard, but that's what some guys have to do. That's that's what they like to do. And he goes, Hey, did you like blocking that shot? Because some people have to do it. It's so funny how they say yeah. it. And they kind of laugh about it later. And he's like, Well, dad, but they don't like blocking shots. I'm like, oh, I think that like some guys, like that's that's their job. Yeah. Like, do you get a thrill out of blocking a shot? Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I think that maybe uh, maybe when I started doing it more, like in college, and and at first it's like a little scary, and like you think about injuries, and but now I'm just, that's that stuff. When I don't block, I get that myself, you know. So I do enjoy blocking shots, and uh, you know, a game like Seattle where. You know, the coach put me on the ice with 50 seconds left on a six on four. And it's just the, it's just a rush of adrenaline of every shot I blocked. And it, it just like the game is over afterwards. And I was so proud of myself. You know, I'm like, I put my body on the line and I was, I loved it. I loved it. I was like, I hope it happens again. Cause that's me. That's that, you know, Connor will score three. He's going to be pumped. He's going to, that's great. We need that. But I think that we also need guys that are ready to sacrifice. Yeah. And, you know, I'm I'm ready to to do every game, and sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes I'll you know I'll get scored on. I won't block it, and you know I'm I'll watch the replay about ten times to make sure that okay, how can I could I've blocked that shot because that's my job, and I love doing my job. And I'm going to ask you to take one final break. We got about eight minutes left after that for a quick saying because you've really piqued my interest on one other topic I want to get to, and uh, we'll recap again. Uh, Vincent Deharnay, go to his uh, Instagram page, which is uh, Deharnay underscore two, and that's where uh, you can join uh, his fundraiser. Going to help him out is uh, raising money for Lacan in, in Quebec for uh, for kids and their families. Uh, with cancer. He's got a signed McDavid jersey, a signed Gretzky jersey, a signed coffee jersey. We were bugging him. He's going to have to get a signed DeHarnay jersey in there, I would think, too, because uh, based on the text line, there's lots of people who want the Vinny jersey. So uh, that's pretty good. Uh, we'll come back here on the Gregor Show presented by PlayAlberta.ca. Uh, and once again, hey, with fans are already donating to, to yeah, your cause. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Thank uh, you. I really, I really appreciate it. Yeah, so once, fans, fans are awesome. Yeah, once again, go to uh, his uh, Instagram page, uh, DeHarnay underscore two. Uh, you can make the donation to Lacan, which helps out... Uh, uh, kids with uh, cancer and their families. And uh, every uh, every donation of uh, $50 or more, you get one. So if you make a $200 donation, you get four entries, right? Do the math. And uh, there's a Connor McDavid signed jersey. There'll be a Gretzky signed jersey. There'll be a Paul Coffey signed jersey. And I think we've convinced uh, <laughs> uh, there's going to be a Day Harnay signed jersey. So we're just going to take credit for that of the peer pressure in studio to say, Vinny, put your jersey in there. You know, you can personalize it maybe well, in the summertime. Well, maybe, maybe if you donate, maybe you'll, you'll be able to, oh, to hey, win it. Hey, maybe you you'll be able to win it. I might have to. That's <laughs> nice. That's good. Uh, 73. Uh, it was my nephew's uh, number. In there you go. Day. So it's not a bad number. I don't mind it at all. I do want to ask um, one of the biggest changes for this year. And, and I like, cause you know, we kind of talked about who is a Wednesday that we're doing today about your career. And we talked about your career early on, but Paul coffee comes in, who is your dad's favorite player, yep. by the way. So when I, I take me back to when your dad found out that now I know he's met Paul before because yep. he was kind of an ambassador with the orders, right? Yep. So he'd met them. But what did your dad say when all of a sudden he's like, Paul coffee's your coach. How, how did that conversation go? Um, well, he was, he was surprised, like obviously, and 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 then cough in his press conference. He was like, "Yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really want to, <laughs> I didn't really want to be here, but I just, I just, I just took it." Yeah. Um, but no, he was obviously very happy for me, but he he didn't really know what to expect, right? Like even even our like the all all six D men, like we didn't really know what to expect, and 
um you know he's such an old school guy and and we we love we we love him we love you know he was around we love talking to him his stories are great but as a as a, an assistant coach it's different right yeah. there's uh behind the bench like doing practices and um and but he's not he's the same person yeah. he didn't change and he's just he's got that swagger you know that swagger of uh I'm one of the best to ever played, and he's not cocky about it, but he's okay. he's got that confidence, that swag, that I think that he gave us, that he that it, it translates to us on the ice and and during practices, and um, you know, to be detailed and to you know, put the puck under tape, don't miss it, <laughs> yeah. and if you miss, he tells you about it, and yeah. and if the forwards miss it, he's like, hey, tell them you want the puck, you know, he's like he's like we gotta talk, we gotta like uh, hold each other accountable. Uh, because one, once it comes to playoffs, it's it's too late. It's too late to start doing that. So we got you know, we had the whole season to do it to to build some habits, to build a confidence in each other. Six D man, all four lines, the goalies. Like if you want to win a championship, you need everybody. So he's like every day he, he keeps talking about, hey, we're winning. Like we're going all the way, and he he gives us that confidence. It's really he's uh, he's made a, a pretty big uh, pretty big change for us. Yeah. Well, honestly, if you look at and and sport logic, because I've you know me, I like to do my research. Uh, the the completed passes from Vincent DeHarnay last year in pre Paul Coffey tell post it's almost doubled, right? You you're you're because you're attempting more passes, right? And I, I saw an interview with you the other day. It's like, well, you know, I've had a few more giveaways, but guess what? When you have the puck more, yep, it, you're going to make a few more mistakes. Yeah. That's just the reality of it, right? So, like when he talked to you guys and said, hey, like. You know, I think there was an interview. I don't know if it was Ekholm or somebody said, well, he said, hey, if you guys don't want to make plays, I'll just get somebody who's going to make plays because yep. that's what we want is to make plays. And there's no NHL player. Like, to me, that's like music to your ears. Whoa, whoa, coach wants me to make plays? All right, I'll do it. Like, was it instant for you? Like, do you notice, like, if you watch film now and just the difference in your game of the decisions with the puck you make, like, is it noticeable for you? Um, Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, at first, it was a little stressful for me because... <laughs> uh, you know, my before games, my me mentality was get the puck out. You got to clear your, your D zone. That's that's what you're here for. You're here to clear your D zone. And after that, doesn't matter what happens. And when he came in, it was like, no, make plays. Don't don't always like, if you need to use the glass, use it. You know, if you're in trouble, it's gonna happen. You know, yeah. it's gonna happen a few times a game like where you're tight. The, the forecheck is good. You're, you're in the best league in the world. It's gonna happen. But he goes, you guys got to make plays. You guys got to move your boots and, okay. and move your feet. Move forward. Make the pass. Don't be standing still making a pass. Always always have your feet moving. That's something that really resonated with me of always moving my feet. And that's one of the biggest changes. And once you move your feet, the play the plays will open up. You know, you see more things. You you know the 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 forecheck will change. Um, so by moving my feet more, I feel like I've been uh, seeing more plays. Uh, and obviously, when when the coach is telling you to make more plays and and it it works, you get more confident. Um, and then your teammates you know, realize that that you can make plays, and they give you confidence too by always you know a little, a little stick tap or all like. Holy Vinny, like great job. Like keep keep doing that. We love it. You know, like keep um, you know, and uh yeah, it's uh like let's say like the, the you know, the last like game or two, like I've I watched video and I'm like, ah, you know, I think I could have made more plays. But I would have watched the same games, let's say at the at the end of last year or at the start of the season, and I would uh, I, I thought I played great. I thought, you know, I thought I was fine. I cleared the zone and but now I'm watching. I'm like, ha! Huh. Like I, I, I thought I would. I threw the puck a little bit too much. Maybe I could have moved my feet a little bit more, make make some better plays, or just try to open up the play a little bit more instead of kind of just throwing it as soon as I get it. Um, so there's definitely a difference in mindset, and I think, I think that's the biggest difference. There's no, uh, you know, cough definitely gave us that that confidence, but yeah. I did the work and. Yes. and um, I did a lot of work with uh, Mark Stewart after practices uh, to to see those plays and, and to handle the puck better and to make quicker passes and uh, yeah and just just trust myself. What did Stewart do on the penalty kill? What was his biggest influence since he took over the PK? Uh, to use our, our instincts. To use our instincts is a big thing. I feel like we were maybe a little thinking a little bit too much. And if you look at all the best PKs in the league, yes, there's a great structure. Every good PK, 
they will have a great structure. But at some point, you got to use your instincts. And, um, you know, if one guy pressures, like all four guys pressure, and we talk a lot more. And, you know, the, those short shares to, to clear uh, the puck, we do it a lot more. Yes. Um, so I think it's uh, he's been doing such a good job at, you know, small details, the sticks. You know, the amount of times that he showed clips of, of our sticks at the wrong place, he's like, boys, we talked about it. It's the small details. You know, there's small details. There's a good structure. And then after that, it's our instincts. You guys are on the kill for a reason. You guys are killers. You guys, you guys are penalty killers. That's You guys are paid to do that. Well, use your brain. Use your instincts. Just don't overthink it. Just do it. And I think that, yes, we had some couple slumps, you know, in the last month or so. Um, but I think the last four or five games, we can't, we, we got back to it. We got back to our, to our good PK, to our, to our instincts. And um, he's been doing a hell of a job. For his second year as, a, as an assistant coach, he's been doing a hell of a job. Now, before I let you go, I want to I harken back to maybe, maybe think back to a young Vincent Deharnay, maybe 10, 12, 15 years ago. And you're watching hockey and you're like, oh, Sidney Crosby and oh, Alex Ovechkin. And now in back to back games, Vincent Deharnay is defending Sidney Crosby. And of course, tomorrow night, uh, Alex Ovechkin, very two different players. Yep. Um, most people probably would have said if there was a scrum and I was betting on, it would be Ovechkin and DeHarnay getting into it. But here's Vincent DeHarnay going after Sidney Crosby. Is that is that an awkward? Like when you look back, is it funny? Is it weird? Kind of um, like was he a big hero of yours growing up? Yeah, growing up, uh, I think Sid. I still have his jersey back home. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah I still have his jersey back home. Growing up, my my brother and I loved them. Uh, you know, he played in, in the queue for uh, Rimouski and uh, we, we would watch him play and we thought he was such a good player, such a, a good person as well. He's so generous with, with his time and with, with charities and with kids. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, it's, I didn't like what he did to Kulak at the end of the second and I just give him a little push to kind of, to just let him know I wanted to, to kind of talk to him and, and tell him and he, you know, turn around and, try to spear me in and I just yeah I didn't just want to show him that I didn't like it and yeah the, after the game I was uh I don't think that I was walking in, in the hallway and not many uh not many Pittsburgh employees were uh were smiling at me <laughs> let's put it that way <laughs> um but then if you uh if you look back at the when we played in Washington I got a, a little bit of a in, in a scrum with OV2 yes. And he crushed me right in the face. Dude. He crushed me in the face, and he got a, a, a penalty for that. You know, the and we started the second period with a power play. So uh, yeah, I can uh, I can die and say that I uh, I got in the scrum with Crosby <laughs> you know, and Ovi. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's not bad for you know for a, a seventh round draft pick at twenty years of age. And uh, and then seven years later makes his NHL debut, and uh, now here he are as a regular uh, with the Edmonton Oilers, uh, a few weeks away from going to the playoffs for the second consecutive year. In thirty seconds, can you explain to me what it was like for you in your first playoff experience? Oh, it was crazy. The first game was nuts. The first game, my my, my parents were there, and yes, I, I was I so them. happy that they, they couldn't make it. Um, but just the national anthem, like the the the, the singer in the stands, and like everyone jumping in and. Um, I mean, I remember on the bench, I had chills. Like it was just such a such a crazy feeling that you know you hear about it, you see it, yeah. you see it on TV. I saw it. The amount of Habs games I've watched, the playoffs games, like, and it was so so electric, so fun. But then it was my time. You know, it was my time to actually live it, to to go through it, and um, it was so fun. Obviously, there was some uh, ups and downs, some learning experiences. Uh, but I'm I'm very excited for for these playoffs because I feel like I I got a lot more experience now and I'm I feel I can have a a little bit more of a of an impact. Well, Vinny, thanks so much for coming in studio today. We really appreciate. Uh, once again, uh, go to Vinny's uh, Instagram, but we got it up on our Twitter page. I've retweeted it, so you can see it there as well. And uh, you can make the donation for uh, Lacan uh, to help out the young kids with uh, and with and their families, uh, kids going through cancer treatment. And as Vinny even said, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, it's it's not always a positive story. They they do have a whole uh, area for grieving and different things like that. So uh, you can make the donations. And uh, any anybody who makes a donation, fifty dollars or multiple of fifty dollars, uh, you'll get uh, entries into the uh, signed McDavid, signed coffee, and signed Wayne Gretzky jerseys. And uh, there will be a Day Herne one in there for sure.